G'day guys, welcome back to my channel, my name is Wildcard. Thank you for watching the Wildcard Rugby Show. Like, comment, and subscribe, and yes, yes, I know what you're thinking. That is a great looking jersey on you, Wildcard. I know, I know. This is uh, one of my favorite jerseys of all time. In fact, this one was sold out during the 2019 Rugby World Cup. I had to go uh, some extreme length to get this for my dad. Okay, this is not my jersey, this is actually my dad's jersey. But hey, I'm wearing it today for the show. And uh, yeah, it really looks good. Uh, remember it being a little bit tight. I've obviously lost a little bit of weight and uh, got to get back to the gym and, you know, really bulk up and feel back into this jersey. But with that being said, you are here today because the war in Rugby Australia continues against the Melbourne Rebels. So obviously last week, the Rebels came out and filed an official lawsuit against Rugby Australia for not supporting the club properly and wanting to, you know, regain the license to run the Rebels back into Super Rugby. Rugby Australia came out this week with a counter, essentially counter, um, counter claim against the Melbourne Rebels, saying that they were misleading the management at Rugby Australia for multiple years, leading Rugby Australia spending millions of dollars keeping it afloat, and without knowing that it was actually doomed to fail. I think that Rugby Australia actually has a pretty good claim here, and the, the Rebels, for many, many years, I felt has been doing a terrible, terrible job. I was surprised they were afloat for so many years, and turns out, the management was, in fact, hiding their losses, hiding their taxes from the uh, from everybody, from the public. And uh, they basically engaged in uh, misleading conduct and fraud. And Rugby Australia was looped into this to try to save them. Uh, not only that they gave them money, uh, Rugby Australia claimed that they gave the Melbourne Rebels over $32 million, I believe it is said here. $32 million. Uh, since 2018 to keep them afloat. But we also know that Rugby Australia has done deals on behalf of Melbourne Rebels like uh, with the Victorian government, like putting the, the, the Super Round at, at, at Melbourne, putting the the, the, the Bledisloe Little Cup in Melbourne, and there were some talks of putting the Rugby World Cup at Melbourne in Melbourne as well in 2027. All of these were done with, uh, di with, um, you know, it, with a deal with the, the Victorian government in an attempt to have the the, uh, the, the the government to keep funding the uh, the Melbourne Rebels. So Rugby Australia actually done a lot and spent a lot of money on the Melbourne Rebels, uh, only for the Rebels to basically yank the rug to saying, hey, sorry, uh, we actually own a lot of taxes. Uh, could you please come and pay for us? And Rugby Australia said, no. Uh, there was a consortium that was brought in supposedly to, to bail out the Rebels. And Rugby Australia basically said, no, we're not interested in that. Because the consortium is basically there to save the management. It's not there to save rugby. It's not there to do to, to, to as angels coming down descending from the sky to save to save rugby in Melbourne. They're they're literally just there to try to extort more money from Rugby Australia. They, they were uh, they they basically want Rugby Australia to commit more money to the club uh, without really firm commitments of how much money they wanted to commit. They, they actually want to put onto the table. Uh, and in fact, one of the person in the consortium was. The father of one of the, uh, the, the, his daughter was literally one of the directing managing directors uh, in, in management at Melbourne Rebels. So yeah, that tells you who is actually in charge uh, of the consortium. Uh, and in fact, the consortium, as part of the, 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 the takeover, they retains some of the management that basically ran the Rebels into the ground uh, to continue operating. That's, that's something that Rugby Australia would not be slightly interested in at all so that's a smart move like if, you, if someone comes in and say hey we're gonna bail out the club uh the condition is you're gonna keep all the current management that doesn't make any sense to me and rugby australia has done the smart thing to not take the bait and to stay out of that minefield and this lawsuit uh it's really unfortunate it just tells you how much of a massive cancer the people that are at melbourne rebels for suing rugby australia because there is nothing to gain for rugby australia that they're already bankrupt that that the, the, the Australia can't sue Melbourne Rebels for the thirty-two million dollars they mess they the, you know the, the Melbourne Rebels were given from misleading information that was given to Rugby Australia, right? Because there's no one there with thirty-two million dollars. Uh, whereas uh, the Melbourne Rebels, all they have to lose is lawyer fees. Whereas Rugby Australia stands to lose like thirty million dollars or whatever the Melbourne Rebels claim to give themselves back into the competition to get the jobs back. And uh, it is uh, it is a very 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 gross contact for Melbourne Rebels and it just tells you the people that runs that club. I hope none of them ever get a job again. If if you know if if you if you if any company wants to hire them, uh it's just yeah, hopefully you know it, it, you, yeah, good luck. Good luck to you. Because it's it's just a disgraceful, right? Like you distorted Rugby Australia for 32 million dollars and now you want uh, to sue them 
with nothing to lose, right? It's just just tells you that you don't really care about rugby. You don't care about you just care about yourselves and care about extorting more money for yourselves. Uh, just absolute, just absolute fucking awful. Anyway, uh, excuse my language. Let's move on. Uh, with that being said, there, I just want to say that there was some talks that there was going to be a um, there was going to be uh, potentially a, 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 a private equity entering to buy the Springboks. The valuation I thought was pretty low. It was a lot lower than the the All Blacks. Uh, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it's a lot lower than the All Blacks. Uh, with that being said, there was still discussions of whether or not to pursue uh, this, you know, to pursue ahead with this deal. There was scheduled a meeting with the Springboks that they were going to have a have an annual general uh, annual general meeting to to talk about uh, to, to discuss this. And this meeting was called off by the Minister of Sport, Art and Culture uh, from 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 South Africa uh, because uh, Gayton McKinsey basically told them to hey let's not push ahead let's have a think about this because uh, this is a big interest of the public the spring box is very important to us and uh, basically say we're gonna put this uh, we're gonna you know put us on hold a bit and we need to brief the government first to see if this is a necessary now some of you guys might think oh this is an overextension of the government uh, I, I guess so but in some sense how important the spring box brand is uh, you, you know, the, I think the All Blacks made a mistake selling out. You know, the, the the brand means more. It's not just the brand. It's not just the team. Like you know, just not just the local team. It is a national symbol, and it's been more than it, it, the, the the interest parties are more than just you know, uh, just more than just a few owners and players. It's 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 the interest of the nation that is at hand. So they want to have a proper look at that before proceeding ahead with you know voting and whatnot with uh, of this deal. Uh, whether to go through uh, with it or not. Uh, now, I just want to talk a little bit about private equity. Uh, recently, the the, the 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 private equity has gained a lot of negativity in in in, in the investment worlds. Uh, there has been a number of very famous companies being driven to bankruptcy because of private equity firms. Uh, one of them, you probably you guys probably know, is um is the Toys R Us store. Uh, basically, this company was doing pretty well, and then they was taken over by private equity. And what private equity did was they just leveraged, they like, borrowed a lot of money, and basically extracted as much cash as they can out of the company, and then just let the money then then file bankruptcy because all the money they borrowed uh, to extract all the cash, and uh, that, and so people were not happy about that. And there was another one where the Red Lobster is not a company that was operating for what thirty five years or something. And then you file bankruptcy recently as well. And again, the the private equity firm kind of like took over the company uh, uh, by based on my understanding. Let me know if I'm wrong on this. I uh, basically took over the company, and they in, the the, uh, the Red Lobster. I'm pretty sure initially they owned like all of their f- real estate, like they owned the shop and everything. So that's why they can sell everything very cheap. Uh, basically, the private equity firm came in and they just made sold out all the real estate and took the cash. Right? Imagine selling the the the, the, the property. For like you know, two million dollars property bubble, right? Sold all the properties and then started like you know collecting rent from the business, and then eventually the business couldn't compete because everything keeps going, prices keep going up, uh, and then they have to pay rent in addition because they no longer own the properties, and they now file bankrupt bankruptcy, uh, and people were very angry about this because uh, private equity basically came in and extor- basically extracted all the value that he can and left. Uh, the company bankrupt because they, you know, they got their money back from that, and that's something you got to be really careful of with, you know, private equity firms. Recently, that's been it's been like engaging a lot of these sort of activities, and you know, when I think about the All Blacks going to South Africa on a four test series on a tour, right? Something that's very obvious to me is just that to extract money, uh, especially considering. The Blood of Solo Cup used to be four test series. Play one in Japan. Did you know that? I can't remember the game playing in Japan at all. Uh, and you know that didn't go well. They, they but you know, that was an attempt to to extract money and you know for for the the All Blacks to tour South Africa uh, to try to get try to make money and just you know putting teams games in the US like you know South Af- uh, uh, like you know All Blacks uh, playing South Africa in, in in Twickenham and all that sort of stuff. It's just another indicator of private equities. Methods of trying to extract money from the team, uh, you know, short-term gains uh, 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 levied against the long-term interest of the team, and uh, especially a team like the Springboks, it, 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 to some extent, and also the, the you know the All Blacks. Uh, there's a public interest involved in that as well. And the the thing is, right here's the here's the play for private equity. They could potentially put 
the stream box or the all blacks bankrupt and guess what they can just take the money and and piss off who's gonna who's the, the teams are not gonna die right the taxpayer will have to ballot out right so they're gonna get it they're gonna take all the money taxpayers are gonna buy them out and then they just bugger off to a next venture and to, to and, and then all of us have to pay for the bill that's what the private equity is going to do to the All Blacks and potentially to the to the Springboks. Uh, mark my words uh, on this day. So, yeah, that that is it's just a reality of this this sort of business deals. Uh, good news for Rugby Australia. Joseph Swali, the, uh, the 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 you know the, the six million dollar man. I don't know the price keeps going up. It used to be like four point nine, and then it's like five point eight. Now it's like six million. Who knows? Let's just call him the uh, uh, the, the savior of Rugby Australia. The, and um, yeah, you know, I, I personally have nothing against him. Again, I just think that from a business perspective, it's a really bad deal. I mean, if they can give him, get him for like 800,000, 500,000 as a starter package, and then, you know, goes up every year to like maybe 800,000, uh, that'll be a great deal. That'll be a good deal. Uh, I could I could live with, uh, that'll be something that I could, um, I could support. But the deal of offering him like $6 million, $2 million a year, as someone who has never played a single day of professional rugby union, he has played rugby league, uh, it's, it's a bit of a head scratcher, especially in the world today where uh, a winger, potentially talking about playing fullback, uh, it's not really worth that kind of money. He does have a good boot. He can kick goals. So maybe that can solve some problem there. But still, uh, even at a fullback position, I think, you know, $2 million a year is quite quite an extortionate amount uh, for, for one player, especially considering the financial situation Rugby Australia is in right now. Uh, England has issued their squad and their first stop is against the All Blacks. And uh, yeah, there are a few injuries here and there for England rugby. Alex Mitchell, um, Harry Rand Randall, Ben Spencer, Jack Povier. Uh, George Ford is named to be on like extended squad. So he's still technically like injured. But um, yeah, let's have a look at the England squad uh, going into the, so far, going into the November November Test Series. Uh, Finn Baxter, Oli Chesham, Dan Cole, Luke Cowan Dickey, Chandler Cunningham South, who's been very, very big form uh, right now. Ben Curry, Tom Curry, Theo Dan, Trevor, Davison, Alex Dombrandt, Ben Earl, Char Charlie Ewells, Ellis Genge, Jamie George, uh, Nick Isekev. I think that's how I say his name. I keep saying, I keep getting it wrong. Uh, the Lock, uh, Mario Toji, Joe Marler, George Martin, Will Stewart, Sam Underhill in the backs. Uh, Elliot Daly, Emmanuel Faye Wambusu, another huge machine. Uh, Tommy Freeman, a really good. George Furbank, Ollie Lawrence, excited to see uh, all of these players play. Alex Lozowski, Luke Northmore, Harry Randall, Tom Roebuck, Henry Slade, Ollie Slidehorn, Finn Russell, Marcus Smith, Ben Spencer, Freddie Stewart, uh, Jack Van Povier will be uh, are the men that are selected so far for the England squad going into the November Test Series. Uh, there was a pullout in the All Blacks 15. Hoskins Sotutu was scheduled to play for the All Blacks 15, which is not the official All Blacks team. And he has pulled out due to a injury to uh, a knee problem. So this, again, further delays his ability to play for the All Blacks, which means he's one day closer to potentially switching to play for another nation. He is... I believe he was the man of the uh, the season in Super Rugby. That's how good of a form he's in right now. Extremely physical. And he has been... Uh, there's some talks that he could potentially for England. And he could potentially play for Fiji as well. So, yeah. Maybe there's a bit of um, stars aligning for him to go for another another country. And as a result, a bunch of injuries to the All Blacks as well. So, a lot of these All Blacks players were allowed to play in the NPC. Which is the local kind of like tier league for the uh, for New Zealand and there has been some injuries so uh, Ethan Black had a Luke Jacobson and Dr. Harvey Lee uh, all kind of like on the injury squad and uh, Peter Larkai has been called up to as a re uh, as, as a backup for the flanker position Larkai has been exceptionally good in super rugby extremely good handling very high work rate and um, yeah especially if he works alongside of some of his Hurricanes teammates like um Tossi, uh, Pasili or Tossi, the prop, they have been a pretty good combo where he, you know, little short offloads from him to Tossi. Uh, both of them has been very, very good around the rock. So excited to see him back. And uh, I always thought he looked like Sia Khaleesi. So maybe the international audience will see him. 
he, he, he has a very, like, his body shape, and he has the headband, and the way he moves, uh, he looks very much like Sia Khaleesi out there on the field. So, yeah, very exciting prospect coming in for the All Blacks. Speaking of, uh, speaking of news, Wales, uh, what is it? Uh, Bunada, Bunada, I think that's how I say it. Anyway, Bunada, uh, Daffy Jenkins has been ruled out of the Autumn Nations with the news last week that, uh, what's his name? <clears throat> anyway, yeah, the, the, the number eight returning. So Daffy Jenkins is out, uh, for Wales. Uh, what's his name? I was, I was going to say white, but it's not. Uh, something right. right uh, anyway, moving on. Moving on. Welsh. Probably Jones. Okay. Alex Jones or something. Anyway, moving on. Um, it'll come to me. Uh, Ma Pablo Matera has been obviously get, get gotten a red card in the final match against the Springboks in Rugby Championship. He was issued with a two-match suspension. And as a result, he's only going to miss one match for the November International Test Series. I was pretty happy to see that because Pablo has been extremely good for Argentina. I, in fact, had him as a potential nominee for World Rugby Player of the Year so far. So I was I was disappointed that he might have been suspended for the entire uh, November Test Series. But it, luckily, he's not. He's only got, getting uh, suspended till November 10th. And he's only going to miss out the game against Italy. So he will be in action and looking forward to see him play again uh, in Argentina. Uh, for Argentina. Now, another big name that's kind of on the on the hunt, uh, potentially by other clubs, is Duhan van der Merwe. He was playing for the Worcester Warriors, and the Warriors obviously went under a couple of years ago. So he then he was you know brought into like in a short term quick signing frenzy, ended up in Edinburgh, and now that he's kind of like calmed down a little bit, uh, he's looking at potentially getting a bigger deal in France. There's a number of French teams. Uh, looking at him, so Montpellier, Bayonne, Lyon, and La Rochelle are all potentially looking at offering him a lot of money to go play there. Uh, Jack Willis is potentially, again, ending his England career by going to France. He's potentially looking at a four-year deal with Toulouse, which means he's not going to be available for selections for England. Uh, speaking of Hoskins or Tutu, he's also being hunted by a couple of... Uh, uh, f English clubs actually so potentially that's the move he might go to England because he's um he's getting actually targeted by English clubs one of them is Leicester Tigers under Michael Checker and another one is obviously the 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 franchise brand that is the Saracens for England so if he gets a spot at Saracens play next to Mari Toji he's going to be on a, a short track into the England England setup uh for sure there next up Saman Morat has been ruled out of the Springbok tour with a bit of a small procedure, they're not they're not a hundred percent guaranteed that he will play. But um, yeah, he's just gonna be. But there's a potential that he, he might miss out on the November Test series. No detail on what the procedure actually is. Yeah, just small injury. But um, yeah, potentially missing out there. And finally, there was obviously as a result of the you know the 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 release of the book. Between, uh, from Johnny Sexton revealing that what Rico has said to him, calling a see you next Tuesday, don't miss your fly home. Uh, he was there was a lot of heat coming in between the All Blacks and uh, and, and Ireland, so this is going to be a pretty, pretty good November test series. Going to sell some tickets. And Scott Robertson came out and responded to this, and he kind of feels like there's always going to be a lot of bad blood between the two sides and adds a lot of excitement. and you know, he, he thinks that, you know, it's just a bit of banter. It's not, nothing, nothing personal. And uh, I think it's back and forth a bit, right? You know, uh, it all started when, when Dan Cole, Colsey, called Johnny Sexton a mouthy, uh, can't say that word on YouTube. And then with, uh, what's his name? The, the badge, what is his name is? Um, Peter Armani calling Sam K, uh, a, a, a shit Richie. Right, a shit version of Richie. Uh, that's that's actually a compliment. Shit, Richie is still pretty fucking good. I reckon still still probably better than most players around the world. Okay, a shit Richie, and um, and then and then you know obviously the 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 big blowout at the Rugby World Cup quarterfinal where you know the the, the <laughs> Rico uh, telling Johnny Sexton you know to to not miss the fly home and called him the c word as well. So yeah, this will be exciting and uh, I'm. 
pretty sure the All Blacks are playing, playing, um, playing the Fingo, playing, playing Ireland, right? I'm pretty sure it's All Blacks playing Ireland and England. Oh, wait, there's a schedule just here, right? Play Ireland, England. Um, I'm pretty sure they play Ireland, England, and France. And, uh, yeah, let me know if I'm wrong, but I could just be... And they play Japan as well. So it's like Japan, Ireland, England, France. And I think there was one, like, I think it was, uh, I think it was Scotland or something. There was one, once there was another one in there somewhere. But, um, yeah, we'll have to see. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching. This is uh, news for this week. Like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. And, um, yeah, see you guys, um, see you guys next week. And have a good one. Cheers.